try again. MHF for you, Unit 9 seminar. We're going to cover long division of polynomials. We're going to cover the remainder theorem, the factor theorem, and synthetic division. So go ahead and copy uh, these key points for long division of a polynomial. And then we're going to do an example of um, a quadratic equation divided by a binomial. So a polynomial divided by a binomial. So long division can be used to divide a polynomial by a binomial if we make sure that the polynomials, uh, the polynomial is in standard form and in order of descending powers. Zero must be used as the coefficient of any po missing powers of the variable in the dividend. So we're going to do some examples. For example, you're not going to always have x cubed and then an x squared and then an x and then a constant. Some of those uh, variables may be missing. And if they are missing, uh, we must let ze zero stand in its place. To determine restrictions, set the divisor equal to zero and isolate for the variable. So I have made a very detailed seminar for you guys because the 8-9 test is going to be quite, well, 8-9 and 10 are going to all um, rely on these concepts, and these are uh, concepts are the exact things you need for your university deadlines. So we are going to go right to the very last minute of this period. So we are going to start off with a short example and review some terminology. And right after this, we're going to do a long uh, polynomial division question. OK, so first of all, the binomial over here is what we called the divisor. Our long polynomial is the dividend. The answer on top is going to be the quotient. And whatever we may, if this does not divide evenly, then that is what we are going to call the remainder, which I'm sure you guys all know. But these three terms, divisor, dividend, and quotient, is what you have to really review for the test because we're going to be asking you that terminology. And for the factor theorem and the remainder theorem, you need to know what I mean when I say divisor, when I say quotient. Okay, so the way we do long division, first of all, binomial, we're going to try to find another binomial that divides into this polynomial. So I can't start right on top of here because I have two terms. So I have to figure out, okay, in order to eliminate the x squared, I'm going to multiply x by an x. That makes sense because it's x times x would give me one positive x squared. But I'm going to have to multiply by both my x and the positive 2. So x times x gives me x squared. x times positive 2 gives me positive 2x. Now this is long division, just like we used to do with numbers in elementary school. Um, what do I do next? After I multiply, am I going to add these terms or subtract? Subtract. Good. So x squared minus x squared gives me 0. Positive 5x minus positive 2x is going to give me positive 3x. And then I'm going to bring down the positive 7 to make this positive 7. So now you're going to really focus. The key on this is to focus on the first term. What do, oops, come on, smart board. Okay, I want to highlight that. So I want to focus on my positive 3x. What do I have to multiply x plus 2 by in order to get positive 3x? What do I multiply? 3x, oh, yeah, hold on. Uh, yeah, yes, x times, I'm going to use positive 3 to eliminate this positive 3x, because 3 times x gives me 3x, and 3 times 2 is positive 6. So now when I subtract, 
I get 0 plus 1. So the way I can write out my final answer, okay, so now that we have the actual long division process complete, we simply put that there, extend the page. So I can write that x squared or x squared plus 5x plus 7 is going to be equal to my, my dividend. Is everyone okay with this? Okay, let's go to a more complex question now. Okay, x cubed minus 7x minus 6 plus x um, divided by x plus 1. Now we have to remember to state our restriction first of all. So I'm going to say x plus 1 goes into x cubed. Now, do I have a term for x squared? No. So I'm going to let that be represented by 0. Uh, minus 7x minus 6. My restriction, because remember, if this was a division case, my, uh, my x plus 1 would be in the denominator. So the restriction is x plus 1 cannot be equal to 0. That means x cannot be equal to negative 1. No matter what, x cannot be equal to negative 1. Um, so we're going to start off with putting this down a little bit. A little bit more. A little bit more. OK, I'm going to start off with multiplying. So this is a 0x. Squared. So I'm going to multiply by x squared because x squared times x plus 1 is going to give me x cubed plus x squared. Now when I subtract, x cubed minus x cubed is 0, but 0x zero squared minus x squared is going to give me a negative x squared. Then I have to bring down my negative 7x, remember when you're bringing down your terms, make sure to bring down the sign in front of those terms. So in order to uh, generate a negative x squared, I'm going to write a negative x up in my quotient. So then when I multiply x plus 1 times negative x, I get negative x squared minus x. Subtract those two terms. That gives me 0. Negative 7x minus negative x is going to give me negative 6x. Bring down the negative 6. So if I write a negative 6 up in my quotient and go down a little to give us some room, negative 6 times x plus 1 is negative 6x. Negative 6 times positive 1 is negative 6. When I subtract those two terms, I'm going to get 0. Therefore, my final answer, if we go a little bit down, therefore, x cubed minus 7x minus 6 is going to be equal to x plus 1 times x squared minus x minus 6. So I've broken down my x cubed. Now I can use long division again to figure out how to break this up, or I can just simply use trial and error. And I know that x squared minus x minus 6 can be broken down into x minus 3 and x plus 2.